I hope that you can clearly see me and can hear me. Hi, Himani. Hi, Danny. Uh, Shiva, we don't have the voice. Yes. Just give us two minutes. Yeah, just give us two minutes. Okay, you can hear me now. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for letting me know that you can hear me now. Good evening. Hi, Talib. We have Dilip. We have Chess with Abhineet, Divyanshu, Radhika, Himani, Prachi. Awesome. Mahi. Uh, so we don't uh, have uh, in YouTube, but of course, at Baiju's platform, if you will download the app, you will be able to have the ICSE classes or you can visit the official website of Baiju's also. You will find the information over there. Yes, to answer your question, we have courses for ICSE. Good evening, Akshat, Veer, Seema. How are you all? And are you excited? Okay, there's a little bit of eco. Maybe uh, it could be a little eco. We'll get that uh, fixed. Yes. Awesome. Yes, Padma. Awesome. Vimi, Talib, Rashmi, Asif. Glamorous mean. Yes, glamorous with me. Nice, interesting name. Hey, Mrata, good evening. So I hope that all of you can clearly see me and can hear me now, right? Hobbies and craft. Hi. Good evening, Sumit. Good to see all of you here. Awesome. Yes, Talib, I know that you're new to this channel. I am super awesome. Thank you for asking. I hope that all of you are in good health and are really, very really excited for the topic that we will be discussing in today's class. So again, as I always say, now our focus is to provide you the quality education, right? It's really very important for all of us to focus in the class. So that's one thing. Please have your pen in and notebook with you so that you can note down all the important points that we will be discussing okay that's a promise that you have to do yes a promise between you and me so that our class runs really very smoothly now this topic is a little bit easy uh, and we can say it a little bit lengthy also so i want your patience i haven't started teaching now i'm just giving you some uh, instruction or some of the you know the things that we'll be doing in the class awesome so in today's class, we will be discussing about the simple permanent tissue. Now, this is really very important, right? Before we get ahead of this, of course, we know that your midterm or your half elise are coming. Okay, quickly tell me how many of you have actually got the information from your school that you will be having your half elise examination during the uh, month of September, mostly. Yes, Blackpink say me. Yes, Antra. Hi. Good evening. Yes, Vimi saying me. Himani is also saying September. Blackpink, yours in September. Yes, Shifa. Hobby and craft me. Snow Princess me. Atif. Okay. It's starting from the 22nd of August also. Moralisha says October. Okay. Abhineet says. So, somewhere around the end of the August, the middle of the whole month of the September and it might be acting, uh, you know, and uh, ending in the month of the October. Awesome. So we have this. So for, for that, right, what we are doing, we are actually having an amazing whole new series that will be focusing on the midterm. So of course, the set, the series name is Mission to Midterm. And of course, as we always say, we promise you to provide the quality education and we promise you that we'll provide you a good quality education so that it can help you in scoring better marks and in a great understanding. So of course, you know that you need to subscribe for that so that you have all the information right which is flowing now of course you will be having all of these important things you'll get the pdfs one shot marathons mock test exam focused questions and of course in math you will have the formula cheat sheet doubt solving and exam strategies now of course we, we had a session about the anthe and over here we have this right you can definitely register it for free so please do try it out Right, it's a really very really interesting thing. It's an all India level examination. We had a session on it. You can definitely check that session out and talk about it. And of course, it will give you a chance to go to the NASA also. So this is nothing but the basically a, a very simple examination where, of course, you will be writing the online and the offline mode. And of course, over here we have the dates and celebrating the Mehanatka result with all of you. 
So we have Trisha, she scored 99.8%, she is a student of the Baijus and of course, see, she did amazingly well. Apart from her, there are other students also who did this right and of course, many many congratulations to each one of you. Moving really very quickly ahead to the telegram, all of you are there because we'll be sh sharing the session notes. And let's get started. Now I want a very quick thumbs up from all of you, right? What is the time now? It's approximately um, 6, 7, right? Tooth decay, of course the tooth is getting completely decayed. There will be the formation of black color, right? Of course the bacteria and of course there's a damage happening. When you talk about the tooth plague, uh, it is a formation, right? A yellow sticky layer that is formed. Right, I want a very quick thumbs up from each one of you. We are starting, right? Now, I want 40 minutes of your attention. Now, of course, in between, we'll have questions. Of course, we'll have a lot of musti also. But I want your attention. This crash course, uh, Himani, is for us to revise and for us to get prepared for our half yearly examination. Great. I can see lots of thumbs up. Yes. Lots of thumbs up over here. Yeah, I missed out the question from the previous session. I will be taking it up, right? Yes, Deepak, give me some time. I will be discussing that, Sumit. Okay, so in today's class, we will be discussing about these three important topics. We will be discussing about the permanent tissue, of course, its type, simple permanent tissue and the protective tissue. So let's get started. Okay, now in the previous class, we discussed about the plant tissue and we have two major types of it. We have meristematic tissues and then we have the permanent tissue. Meristematic tissues are the one that keeps on dividing continuously right of course we have talked about it so we'll not be going into detail but the meristematic tissue can divide whereas the permanent tissue cannot divide that's a main difference between these two yes yes black pink it's a third session first session we had it where we had a, just a very quick introduction of the tissues Mona Lisha, I will be discussing about the homework question, but you need to give me some time not now in the beginning it's a very very important topic everyone now Throughout the entire career where I've been teaching for almost more than nine years now, this chapter holds a very, very importance. Not just in the ninth class, but of course in the eleventh class also. So it's a time for you to have a very strong foundation. We will, we have learned about what are tissues in our earlier classes, but this is the first time you will be learning about the different types altogether, right? So I want all of you to focus here. It's the foundation, right? So, we know that two types can divide, cannot divide. Now, of course, when we talk about the meristematic tissue, it divides continuously, right? Continuously, it will be dividing. Whereas, in terms of the permanent tissue, right, of course, it will not be dividing. And it performs a very important functions like photosynthesis and it provides the mechanical support. Yes, ground tissue. Yeah, we will be discussing about that. Yes, we will be discussing about the ground tissue also. You need to just wait for some time. Okay, so have everyone, are we clear with this, right? Meristematic and the permanent. Now, can I ask you a question? All of you, can I ask you a question? Yes, Ayush. First difference is that meristematic tissues divide, permanent tissue does don't divide. And of course, the places are different, right? We'll be discussing more further. So the question is how the meristematic tissues or, or the question is how the permanent tissues are formed. Very quickly. Yes, very quickly, that how the permanent tissues are formed. Very good, very good. Quickly answer everyone. It's a really very important and super interesting question, I would say. Yes, matured cells, very good. So, of course, when we talk about the uh, permanent tissue, they actually develop from the meristematic tissues only. So, these meristematic cells that we have, right, the meristematic tissues further will be converted into the permanent tissues. And of course, you will see that there will be the loss of the division and that's how it will be happening. And of course, as you have already mentioned, it happens due to the differentiation. Now, let's see how it happens and what will be happening in that. When we talk about the permanent tissue, of course, they are formed by the meristematic tissues differentiation will occur right now what is differentiation differentiation is nothing but these cells right these meristematic cells will get mature and of course they will take up some specific function for example for example you may be there are two siblings at your home 
right? You and your brother or your sister. Now, both of you, in spite of coming from the same upbringing, end up might taking different subjects. Some of you may be like math, some of you might like bio, right? You feel it that it's the right way to approach it, right? And based upon your interest, you pick that subject. Yes or no? Similarly, what happens, the mature cells that are getting mature from the more histomatic tissues, right? Then, of course, they, they, will, they will become the permanent tissue and, of course, they will have a very specific function, right? And that's how we call that whole process as the differentiation. And, of course, in that process, what will be happening? Of course, tissues will be formed from the more histomatic tissues. They will completely develop in size. They will not lose their ability to divide. And, of course, differentiation will occur. And, of course, in this whole process of differentiation, what we will see, we will see that... These cells will grow in size, they will develop a very specific shape, develop the organelles during the uh, maturation and of course, takes up the different function. Very good everyone, very good. Yes, abhi need, uh, abhi need. mature cells will not be able to divide anymore, absolutely correct. Maristomatic tissue is only mature to permanent tissue, very good Prachi, yes. Maristomatic tissue is developed into different types of permanent tissue, very good Rashmi, absolutely correct. Asif, I'll not be able to explain in Hindi uh, as there is a little bit of restriction over here, right? So, we all communicate in here in English. Why vacuoles are not present in the meristematic tissue? It's a very interesting question. Just think about it, Ayush. Meristematic tissues needs to divide continuously, right? And of course, they'll not be able to store a lot of things. And once there's not storing much of the things, hence the absence of vacuole. Yes, are we clear with this, everyone? Quickly, a thumbs up. I can see you're asking some questions. I will be taking up those que questions at the end, which uh, Hemrata can wait, right? Yes, so you need to wait for some time. Very, uh, all the best for that. Awesome, I can see thumbs up and now we are clear that how the, the differentiation occurs and how we will have the meristematic tissues converted or transferred into the permanent tissue. Now, when we talk about the permanent tissue, they are found throughout the plant body, be it the leaf, stem and the roots, right? And let's quickly discuss about three different types. And of course, when we talk about the permanent tissue, we have two types. Simple permanent, where of course, they are made up of only one type of cells and the complex permanent tissue, where which have the different types of permanent cells. Sorry, different types of cells. Are we clear? Now, I want a very quick response, everyone, because it's... That's the advantage we have in life, right? So I want you to pay attention. I know it can get a little bit of overwhelming, right? So I want a quick response from you so that, you know, we all are on the same page. Yeah, that's really very easy. We have simple permanent and uh, complex permanent. In today's class, we are dealing with the simple permanent tissue. And getting started with the first one, we have parenchyma. Now, of course, you might have learned about the parenchyma, but the one thing which we need to remember is that they are all a round shape. Now, let's not look over here. Now, I can't hide the points which are there, but I wanted to look over on this particular image, right? Now, of course, one thing we can see they're oval in shape, right? Or we can say they're round in shape also. Nucleus is present. Of course, it is there, right? It is a dense but small nucleus. We have the protoplasm, the living protoplasm, right? It has a very thin cell wall, right? And of course, it has a lot of intercellular space. So these are some of the important characteristic features. So again, after some time, what you will do, you can take a screenshot of it and you can remember these are the important characteristic features. You can write your doubt, uh, Roshni, in the uh, comment section below, right in the chat. Very good. Um, Parnatik, yes, very good, that you are first in your class, right, so we have the characteristic features of the uh, parenchyma, now let's quickly talk about the location, now they are present throughout, right, they are present throughout the plants, be it the roots, stems, leaves, we will see this, then come the important functions of it, it provides the structural support and of course plays a very important role in the storage of material. Protoplasm is a living part, uh, as if protoplasm is a living part of the cell, right? And it, it includes the organelles and the nucleus. How many types of simple permanent tissue? There are three types of simple permanent tissue. 
What is intercellular space? A space between the two cells is called as the intercellular space. Very good, very good. Why do you, uh, what do you mean by dense and living protoplasm? Dense meat. Dense means it will be much more, right? It will be there in a good quantity. Yes, and living protoplasm means, of course, it has the, basically the protoplasm is the living part of the cell. Yes, Asif and Prachi have answered your question. Nice. So, we, uh, let's quickly recap about the parenchyma. Those of you who had doubt, let's quickly go back over here and quickly see. So, the parenchyma are the thin, they have thin cell wall, right? Very important. They have thin cell wall. They have uh, thick and small nucleus. They are circular or oval in shape. They have lot of intercellular space. And of course, they have dense and living protoplasm. Location present throughout the plant and of course, functions are over here. Now, let's quickly check our knowledge with this question. What, which of the following is not a type of a simple permanent tissue? Quickly answer everyone. I use there's no definition of dense protoplasm. You can definitely look for protoplasm. Yes. Dense means more. Right. Very good. Very good. I can see the answer over here. The correct answer to this question. Everyone quickly write in the chat box. Yes. Very good, everyone. I'll give you one minute time. <clears throat> yes, and the correct answer to this question is option number C. Epical meristem, we know that it is not the simple permanent tissue. It's very obvious, right? It's, it's the meristematic tissue. Right? Um, yes. Very good. Now, let's move ahead to the next part, which talks about the parenchyma. Now, of course, there are two major different types of parenchyma we will usually study in the plants, right? Yes, are we clear with that? Yes, thank you, Sheikh. Very good. Very good, everyone who have answered option number C. Now, we have chlorenchyma and erenchyma. Yes? Are we clear everyone? Very good. So we have parenchyma. It has two major types based upon the shape, right? Based upon the shape of the cells, right? Of course, and overall the functions, what these tissues will be performing. We have two major, two major, uh, you know, categories. We have chlorenchyma and we have erenchyma, right? And let's quickly talk about the chlorenchyma first. Now, as the word chlorenchyma is there, can you quickly tell what is the hint over here? Chlorenchyma. It will have the... Yes, it will have what? It will have more amount of the chloroplast. As the word is there, chlorenchyma. Very good, everyone. It contains the chlorophyll. Absolutely correct. And as it has the chlorophyll, what will happen? It can easily help the plants to produce their own food by the process of photosynthesis. Are we clear? So, of course, it will have the similar characteristic features. But the addition over here is that it will have more amount of the, it will have more amount of the chloroplast. Location, of course, when we talk about the location of it, mainly present in the leaves of the plants because there only we see the process of photosynthesis uh, happening. And of course, also present in the stem of some plants. Now, of course, stems of some plants when the stems are when the plant are really very young. Very good. So, and the function of it, of course, is to perform the photosynthesis. So, this is clear, right? Very good, Mithun. Very good. Yes. Chlorin, uh, chlorophyll. Very good. So, are we clear with chlorenchyma? Everyone, can I tell you a very interesting and super important point? That please remember the spelling of the chlorenchyma. Because I have, uh, when I was in schools, right, I used to check the notebooks, the exam paper, and majority of the students will be, you know, there will be some error here and there in the spelling of these. Chlorenchyma, erenchyma, parenchyma, sclerenchyma, colenchyma. So be careful with the spellings, right? Very good. Now let's quickly check our knowledge, everyone. See, I am, I am in a very, in full of energy mode because it's a really very important chapter. So I want you to be paying attention to the class. Awesome. Quickly answer everyone, which of the following is not a function of parenchyma? Very easy. Provide hard texture, storage of food, provides uh, structural support or storage of the waste material. 
Rashmi, we will make sure that animal kingdom, sorry, animal tissues are not confusing for you and for all our friends here. Very good. Which of this is not a function of parenchyma? Quickly, everyone. I, yeah, there's a lot of confusion over here. See, we know that it store food. It has vacuole. It provides structural support also because it's there throughout the plant, right? Stores waste material because it has a vacuole, right? If it is storing the food, it will be storing the waste also. So, which is not the function of the parenchyma is to provide the hard texture as parenchyma are the living cells, right? And they will not be able to provide the hard texture. So, are we clear everyone? That's a correct answer. Very good. So, we are clear with parenchyma, right? And we have talked about the chlorenchyma. Now, we are talking about uh, drum rolls. So the arenchyma, as you were mentioning, now arenchyma is another type of parenchyma. Now, of course, over here, they will have oval in the round shape, thin cell wall, the same thing will be there. But of course, they have large air cavity. Can you see this, right? They have large air cavity. And apart from that, they are found in the aquatic plant, like water lily. Interesting, right? And because of that, only the plants can float. So, arenchyma helps the plants to float. Are we clear? Very good. Uh, Snow princess, then abhinith, yes. Mithun, lily lotus, yes. Very good. Internal space is more, yes. Koteshwar, hemlata helps in the plants to float. Absolutely correct. Mona Lisha is mentioning the examples and with the emojis. Rose is there, but rose will not float, but yeah, lotus will, sure. Also provide, uh, provide the buoyancy, yes. Very good, Vidhi. Awesome. So we are clear with this, right? So let's quickly look over here. Now, of course, mainly present in the water plants, have a very thin wall. And of course, when we talk about the functions of it, right? Provide the structural support, help in the food storage, perform photosynthesis, and of course, help plants to float. Ta -ra -ra. The plants will float happily. Yes. So it's a very easy thing, right? Awesome. Don't look at this image, but yeah, though you will get confused, you'll be learning more further. It's nothing important over here. Now, let's talk about the question. We can find the arenchyma in which of the following plants? Rose, wheat, water lily or neem? Easiest of all, everyone. Quickly read the question carefully. We are planning to find out where the arenchyma is present. Yes, yes, I can see. I can see. Very good. Absolutely correct. The correct answer is option number C. That is the water lily and water lily will have the arenchyma. So with this, we are done with the parenchyma, right? So parenchyma is a type of simple permanent tissue, right? It has thin cell wall, important thin cell wall, round or oval shape, lot of intercellular space, nucleus is dense, very small nucleus, right? Then of course, it, it plays a very important role in the storage of the food, right? And of course, it is present throughout the plant's body. It has two types. Arenchyma, which actually helps the plants to float, right? And we have it in the water lily. Then, of course, chlorenchyma, which actually helps in the process of photosynthesis. Are we clear? Yes, that's a very quick recap. And of course, you can always come back and watch it. And I will be sharing the PDF of this session on the Telegram group. So, I would request you to join the Telegram group. Yes, Chitra. Uh, Today's session can be a little bit longer. I will try to wind up by 6.45. Yes? Awesome. Are we clear? Now, uh, uh, very quickly, everyone, a quick smiley chain. <coughs> and we'll move ahead. Yes? So, we are done with the parenchyma. Now, I understand that all of you are coming here. And all of you, when I see the chat, I feel that you are getting all the points. And it just gives me so much of happiness. I'm telling you seriously. Right, but what you can do once you are done with your classes here, before you sleep today, it's a small request. I hope you will listen to your teacher. I want all of you to read the simple permanent issue once. Only once. It's a very small topic in the textbook, right? Just read it. You know what will happen? You will feel super confident about it. That ma'am, it is such an easy topic. We can master this, right? So, I would request all of you to read the textbook today before you sleep. Only for, I would say if you read it in 10 minutes, you can finish it off. Right? Yes. Hi, Isha. Thank you, Vidhi. 
yes i can see lots of yes 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 thank you thank you so much now let's move to the next part starch is a type of carbohydrates uh, same which is stored in the plants right moving ahead to the uh, simple permanent tissue yes uh, uh, the link the link of the telegram is in the description box below below this video you will be able to see the link awesome so next we are talking about colon chyma moving back ahead right moving back and to the direction of the simple permanent tissue the next one is the easiest one everyone so the difficult one was the parenchyma the easiest one is the colon chyma because it's they are really very really special so they have long and living cells again parenchyma is living colon uh, colon chyma is living living cells they have thick cell wall as we can clearly see they have very thick um, thick um, cell wall so hem lata this question i will be tackling when we discussing about the cork right discussing about the epidermis so as of now i would request you to wait thank you monalesha for answering that yes very good very good so we have long and living cells they have thick cell walls as you can see over here right we can clearly see they have in regular thickening in the cell wall we can clearly see that also they have less intercellular space they are more closely placed and of course they are usually found in the climbers right so they have thick corners they have very little intercellular space they are living and of course they are long cells they have thick cell wall in regular thickening and these are the important characteristic features then when we talk about the location as it's already mentioned it is usually found in the climbers now apart from the climbers they are also present in the young plants when they move right okay i'm sure with the climbers are the plants that they climb right for example over here if you have seen the karela ka plant right yes the climbers which will be climbing and of course they are in the young plants also okay how many of you seen plant going like this this when there's a huge strong i cannot be a plant but i'm just trying to enact it i'm sure you you must have seen that it will be going ah oh, front and back front and back but it will not just go with the wind it happens rarely right and that is because we have the colon chyma which provides them a little bit of strength so that they can uh, you know stick together and of course provide the flexibility yes yes everyone are we clear with this yes uh shiva i can't see the chat yes everyone just one minute there's some glitch yeah now it's fine they are very flexible yes very good they are very flexible so the function of the colon chyma of course is really very easy it will be providing the flexibility to the tendrils and of course provide the mechanical support also yes are we clear with this so colon chyma is the easiest one they have they are long and living cells long and living cells thick cell wall thickening in the corners right less intercellular space and of course provides the mechanical strength usually found in the climbers provides a flexibility right are we clear very good tendrils so as if of course tendrils are these right can you see these yes so i'm sure you must have seen uh, if there are small plants right they have those in hindi we call them bail right so yeah it just goes awesome yes every is april you are new welcome to the class yes very good uh, vidhi preet uh, abhinit absence of the woody part absolutely yes uh, tanmay you can write your on uh, question over here awesome let's quickly check our knowledge everyone over here very quickly yes <clears throat> the tendrils of the climbers have better flexibility due to the presence of it so it's easiest question i don't even want to read the question we have just discussed right the tendrils of the climbers have better flexibility because of presence of the chlor uh, colon chyma now see what i did now instead of saying colon chyma i said it chloran so what happens we might confuse with these two terms but as a teacher i believe that you will not be doing you are you are my dear bachcha's intelligence and i'm sure you will not mix these two names so colon chyma is the correct answer 
ये ए पक्का ए पक्का लॉक किया जाए यस वेरी गुड ऑसम सो वी आर डन विद टू वी आर डन विद टू तेजस्विनी वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग द एपिथेलियल टिश्यू वंस वी कंप्लीट द कॉम्प्लेक्स परमानेंट टिश्यू Yes, so I would say you need to wait at least for one more session. After this, there will be one more session, and after that, we'll have the epithelial tissues. We will have it for sure. Awesome. Now we're done with two, everyone. Yes, we are done with the parenchyma, and of course with the colon chyma. Let's move to the last but not the least, the sclerenchyma. Drum rolls, everyone, for this because this is really very special. Now, can I tell you what is the special thing about the sclerenchyma? Of course, we can see over here in the comments which have been mentioned. Of course, they are long, narrow, and dead cells. Now, of course, parenchyma living, colenchyma living, sclerenchyma dead. So they are the dead cells, right? They have a very thick lignified wall. So they have what they have is the lignin. It's basically a chemical which actually surrounds them, right? And because of that, they have very cemented effect. Yes, very good. Now they have narrow lumen. What is lumen? What do you think? What do you think about the idea? No issues, Purnima. Welcome to the class. Yes, John, we will be discussing about that. One minute. What is a lumen? Anyone? Anyone? Anyone has an idea? What is lumen? So. Basically, if we have a tunnel, right? If we have a tube, if we have a tube, the inside space, right, is called as lumen. Are we clear? Yes. Are we clear, everyone? The video is blur. Okay, I think it's fine. Just see. Uh, Shiva, can we check? I think it's fine, everyone. I think maybe for you, uh, you might have an issue. Just refresh your page. Awesome, great. So we can see this part. Yes. So what is lumen? Basically, it's a cavity. It's a cavity that we have, right, within the tubes that we have. Like, if this is a tube, it's a cavity. And of course, we usually see in the blood vessels and the intestine. Snow princess, I'll answer your question, but not now. Very good. So we are clear with this, right? So what they have, they have a very narrow lumen. Basically, they are dead, right? So they don't have much space also inside them. The uh, the question is that which tube? Tanmay, if you see over here, right? So basically, we, this is from the top, right? And of course, that's how we are talking about. Yes. Awesome. Now let's move ahead and let's talk about the types of it. As many of you are asking, now focus over here. Yes. Through chlorenchyma and arenchyma and storage tissues or the perimeter is nature. What do have this uh, specific? Why they do have the specific names? Because of course, when we talk about, they have different functions, right? And based upon that, they have the uh, different name. Yes. So we have this, right? Now we know that sclerenchyma are dead cells, and there are two different types of it. We can say we have fibers and we have sclerides. Now all of you focus over here. It's not a part of ICSE. Those of you, uh, it's not a part of CBSE. Those of you who are in ICSE or are preparing for NTSC, or of course, are you preparing for your NEET examination? This is important, right? This is important. So. There are two types of sclerenchyma. We have the sclerides and the fiber. Over here, of course, in your textbook, you have this diagram. You don't have this diagram, the scleroid diagram, but you have a diagram of fiber. After a night when you are going through the books, right? Please look through the diagrams also. So over here we have the lumen. Can you see? Right? This is the lumen. The narrow space that we uh, that we see. See over here we have the lumen, the empty space, right, between the tubes. Of course, they have a very thick walls, and of course, they are dead. We have fiber over here, and over here we have the scleride. Can you see? And these are the small pits. Okay, there are two types of sclerenchyma: fiber and scleride. Now, let's quickly talk about them in detail. Here we have the fiber one, right? Fiber one is that found on the patches below the epidermis in the monocot stem, and of course, they are very close to the vascular bundles, which are xylem and the uh, phloem, right? 
and they prevent the wearing and tearing the, when the plants bend and of course it provides a mechanical strength. Now fibers are something which will be providing the mechanical strength. Right, are we clear? Yes, I hope that all of you are paying attention. Very good. Uh, Siva, we will be discussing about epidermis. Ashmita, we will be discussing about that but it's not a part of this. My name is Ankita. Yes, okay. So just remember this, you don't have to know much details of it. Fibers gives the mechanical support and we have the sclerides. Now they are in regular very brittle cells and of course they are called as stone cells. Now pay attention over here everyone. Why, uh, the other name of scleride is the stone cells. Okay, how many of you love eating guava? Right? Or maybe the pear, right? You will see uh, seeds inside them. Especially in guava. Right? When you eat guava, you have those small brittle seeds, right? Of course, they are nothing. But they are the sclerenchyma or sclerides basically. Yes? So they have brittle cells. We call them as a stone cells, right? Found in the cortex pith phloem of the plants. These are the places where you will find them. Present in the seed coat, nutshell, walnut cover. You know, we have almond cover also, we have that. And of course, hard grit fruits like the guava, the pear. Pear is Nashpati, right? I'm sure you have uh, heard, of, uh, heard of it and I'm sure you have must have tasted it. So, Nashpati also, when you eat, it's not very smooth in eating. It has a textury feeling. Very good, Renu, and coconut husk also. Yes. Monocot and dicot, I will be discussing. Monocot and dicot are type of plants altogether. Yes, very good. Awesome. Very good, very good. So, when we talk about the sclerenchyma, of course, we are clear that they are dead cells and of course, their location is there in the hard coat of the seeds and they are also present in the vascular bundles. Xylem fibers, xylem, of course, when we are learning more further, you will be able to answer it. Right? And then, of course, we have the functions, provide the mechanical strength, make seed coat hard and, of course, give woody appearance. Yes. Very good, very good. Are we clear with this? Are we clear with sclerenchyma? Quickly everyone, are we clear with sclerenchyma? <coughs> yes, yes, please do tell me. Very good, very good. Very good. Now, Yes. Okay. Now let me tell you a very interesting fact. I'm sure you must have seen all of these, right? The ropes, the jute bags and of course, uh, you know, the guinea bags that we, I'm sure you must have seen on the shops where they'll be storing the grains, right? You know, what is the common between these? What is one thing which is common between these? Yes. <coughs> Very good, they are the sclerenchyma fibers. Very, very good everyone. Very good. So that's a, that's a correct answer. Of course, they have the sclerenchyma fiber. That's a common thing between them. Nice, very good. So let's quickly answer this question. Here we go. Which of the following tissues have dead cells? Easiest of all. Quickly answer this question everyone. Yes, very good, very good. So we are done with the sclerenchyma and I can see the answers. The correct answer is of course option number A. It's a very, very easy question. Now we can say that because we have, you know, studied it. We, now we know this because we have studied it and we are clear with it. <coughs> yes. So now let's move ahead, right? Sclerenchyma. So, I think there was a doubt on the ideoblast, right? Of course, they are the cells which are kind of, they are isolated cells, I would say. They are part of the sclerenchyma family only. And they play a very important role in the storage, right? Basically, oil, latex, gums, etc. So, I think a lot of you are asking about what is the ideoblast and that, that's the answer. So, you can definitely check again. Great. Quickly, everyone, a quick thumbs up and we will move ahead. Yes. So, we are done with simple permanent tissue. 
when we talk about the simple permanent tissue, it has three. It has parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma, right? We call them as a supporting tissue. Now, you'll be learning more when you'll be in your higher classes. But we call them as supporting tissue but some, because they somehow is providing the support to the plants. Then comes the another type, which of course we call them as a ground tissue, right? Or sometimes we call it as the protective tissues also, right? We call them as a protective tissues also. Are we clear? Yes. Are we clear? Yes, we don't have menti today. We don't have menti. We'll be just focusing on the content class. Okay. So, or I think initially, I think few of you were asking about it. So, we also call them as a ground tissue. Right? So, in that we have three protective tissue, of course. As we have the skin, plants also have the epidermis, which is the outer layer, right? Of course, it's there on the leaf, leaf and different parts of the plant, root, epidermis, and of course, we have the cork. So, let's quickly start with the leaf epidermis. So, of course, epidermis itself means it is there on the outer membrane, right? Yes, it is there on the outer membrane. Vidhi, on our skin, we have uh, like our, um, our body, we have the skin which is the epidermal we say okay yes so epidermis layer is present throughout the plants be it on the leaf stem and the roots here we are starting with the leaf right and the main important characteristic features of it is that it has cutin uh, sorry cuticle right and of course it's a waxy coating as you are saying Mona Lisha yes right on to that of course it's a very shiny layer on to that we have one more layer which is a waxy coating that actually prevent the invasion of the a lot of insects prevent the loss of water also. Are we clear? It's an outermost layer made up of single layer of a living cells covered with the cuticle and of course contain the stromata. So Abhinith, it's basically a chemical, basically a waxy coating, right? Yes, very good. I'm sure you must have seen right on the um, books, right? There will be a very transparent sheet. Yes? Okay. Nice. So I hope that you are there with me, right? Very good. So that's the uh, that's all about the leaf epidermis. And let me talk about the functions of it. Now it has these amazing functions. It is the outer membrane. It will be protecting the uh, plant, right? And of course, will be lowering the loss of water, preventing the mechanical damage, preventing the parasite invasion because it has a membrane. And of course, helps in the exchange of the gases. Now we know that, right? These are the important functions of the leaf epidermis. Are we clear? Yes, I can see lots of thumbs up. Very good, everyone. Hi, Anjali. Good evening. Yes. Awesome. So can you see this? Right over here, we have the stromata. Now this stromata is present on the leaf epidermis, right? And plays a very, very important role in exchange of the gases and it actually help in regulating the water loss also. So, stroma basic is basically the pore which is open and of course it is guarded by the guard cells. So, guard cells control the opening and the closing of the stromata. Are we clear? Stromata are the tiny pore opening which are there on the epidermis. The panchoplastids are a type of organelles that are present in plant cells and it has the chloroplast, leucoplast and chromoplast. So, uh, we'll be starting the animal tissue next week. Next week, Tuesday. Sorry, next, next week, Wednesday. Yes. Rhea, uh, yesterday we had a class on that. We'll have a class uh, on 10th standard next week now. Very good. Very good, Tripti. Awesome. So, we are clear with this, right? Leaf epidermis is clear. Now, let's move to the root epidermis now in root epidermis of course we have they are in the roots right they have the root here very very thin layer okay how many of you have seen roots oh now uh, uh, the cuticle right of course it's a waxy coating which is present on the leaf yes okay everyone focus in the class focus in the class if you have seen roots, if you cl look closely, then look closely, right? You will be able to see those hair-like structures. These are root hair and of course they are more in number. 
and they actually help in increasing this uh, water absorption. There are so many numbers that's why they increase the surface area for the absorption of water. And they have the epidermis, they also have a very protected layer around them. And of course, over here we have the root hair. So root hair and of course over here we have the epidermis. Yes, very good. Oh, Vivek, please don't do that. If you have a money plant which is there in the water, you can do that. Unnecessary, you will be uprooting a plant. Uh, no, that will be hurting them. <laughs> yes. Awesome, everyone. Now, the final topic, that's one we are talking about, right? I think Hemlata, the doubt you have, will be answering over here. The last but not the least is the cork, right? Now, how many of you have seen a big tree? A very, very big tree which is not so smooth, Right? I'm sure in movies you must have seen uh, the actor and the actress hugging the trees, right? And there was a Chipko movement. Where of course, a lot of people uh, just stood near holding or hugging the uh, tree so that they can protect them, right? Of course, there's no, uh, we know the reason why we need to protect the trees. But the outer surface is not so smooth, right? When you, when you hug a tree, I'm sure you'll be able to feel that it's kind of rough, right? Yes. And it's because of the cork or the, or we call it as a bark of the tree. Right now, of course, when you see a new plant, it is green in color. Right? It's very green in color. It's really very smooth. And it's very, you know, it moves around, say. What happens eventually when there is a division of the cells, as you can see in this particular GIF over here, what happens, there's a push, right? So if there are layers, so if this layer is dividing, right, new cells will be dividing in this way. So this will be moving outwards. And as it moves away from the center, what happens, it will not be getting food and water and eventually it will be dead altogether and it forms that very uh, hard cork. Are we clear? Vivek, ma'am, how does the root hair increase the surface area? So, just imagine if I have a um, lot of hairs, right? So, the amount of water they will be absorbing will be more. Vivek, are you clear? I hope that uh, you're clear with this, right? More the number of the root hair means more the absorption of water. Yes. Awesome, everyone. Are we clear? Very good. Quickly give me a thumbs up everyone. Are we clear with this? Are we need a little bit time. Yes. Parasite invasion means that the parasite will be invading. So basically it will be coming and trying to enter into the leaf. But the uh, cuticle and of course the epidermis fights. Very good. So when we talk about the bark, right of the cork, we know that there is a secondary growth happens. And it moves away and of course that's why we will have it. Now, there's a very important one thing which you need to remember is that as they're moving away, right? As they're moving away, there's a chemical which is, of course, mentioned in your CBSC. Please put a highlight over there. Subreen, right? It's there in your textbook and usually asked in the examination for one marks. Now, of course, it's the, uh, you know, it's a basically the chemical that will also be going out on the surface and will be making it impermeable to gas and the water. Are we clear? Yes, Mona Lisha, I didn't understand that. What is this? But I hope that all of you are clear. Are cock cells dead cells? Yes, they are. So these cells are dead. Are we clear, everyone? Very good, very good, very good. So in terms, uh, in terms of the, um, in terms of the protective tissue, we have three. We have leaf epidermis, root epidermis and the cork or the bark. Right? Very good. So you can have a very quick, let's quickly have a very quick, very, very quick recap. We have these three, right? We have parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. Parenchyma, colenchyma are living cells, sclerenchyma dead cells. It has two types, colenchyma and erenchyma. I'll not be going into that much detail, but yeah, you can definitely watch it in the, uh, you know, quickly watch it again. A very quick recap will be difficult for this, right? Just remember that they provide the uh, support, right? And important things from here which usually comes is that 
talk the question talks about the lignin and talks about the functions and then we just discuss about the protective tissue very good so krish that will be a homework for you uh narendra uh sorry navendra uh, cork is a basically the outer layer of the tree right the dead cells yes so here we have the homework question everyone you need to write a short note on the significance of the permanent tissue now uh, many of you are asking about the homework question from the previous session so let's quickly go back and check the homework question right so yes so we are done actually if you want to leave you can if you want to stay here for a while you can yes i will be looking for the video that we did and where we discussed about the um, we discussed about the tissues right so over here we have and uh, the question was really very easy right we talked about the meristematic tissue and many of you have answered already that's amazing here we hello to the homework rockstar we have monalisha i'm really sorry i forgot we have rafeek we have lata chitra um alesha achal kuru nice name interesting name then we have manjeet saima and sumit very good everyone yes i will be sharing the notes on the telegram group everyone i hope that you've enjoyed the session we've got you covered right please don't forget to hit the like button for the video share with your friends share with your friends everyone and of course subscribe to the channel yes lots of love everyone i hope that you have enjoyed the session i know it's a it's a big session i told you in the beginning only yeah we always finished at, on time i would say i think i took 5 minutes extra lots of love everyone lots of love please don't forget to read the textbook you have promised me right you have promised me these are our lengthy sessions because of course these topics are like that if you have still have any doubt please don't don't feel shy as a student you have the greatest power and that is to ask questions so please utilize that power utilize that power everyone and ask questions in the class as well as you can write the question in the comment section below so are we good to go quickly give me a smiley chain and i will leave yes vijay you need to find an answer by yourself it's a very easy answer that's why i'll reserve myself over here and in next class i'll be able to answer yes lots of smileys next session uh, dilip will be having on very recently you will see me either on thursday or on friday <laughs> love the smileys lots of love to each one of you you are the great bachchas right you are my bachchas yes lots of love everyone and i'll be meeting you soon take care of yourself bye bye